Hello friends, my name is Doug. Welcome to Third Style Garage. This is a channel about car restoration, uh, car projects. This playlist is about the resurrection of a 2010 Subaru Forester named Ruby. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, I encourage you to go back and watch those. This will be episode 12, I believe. Is it the final episode? I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll see. Uh, today we are tearing the engine out of Party, the parts car, and this is the rebuilt engine from, suck, no, we're tearing the engine out of Ruby, putting in the rebuilt engine that came out of the part of Party, the parts car. So this is all done and ready to go in. Um, I started taking that engine out already, forgot to film it because I've been off the grid for three weeks on a family trip and adventure and life is really busy at work right now and I totally forgot where I was with things. So sorry about being behind on content. Um, let's get through the intro and I'll show you where we are in this process and we'll get started. Thanks for being here. If you'd be willing, click subscribe, hit the thumbs up button got a comment or a suggestion about um, anything on the channel or ways I can improve it, let me know. Thanks for being here. Here are the parts on the bench. Uh, battery came out, fans came out, air filter and box, uh, the air box on the back, and then I took the whole intake assembly off. It just left the wiring harness and the spark plugs and everything on. Uh, there are a variety of hoses that came off. I labeled them as they came off. And uh, everything's just sitting here. Um, for the most part, except for the engine, um, I'm just going to reuse everything that's stock. It should all be the same. 2010 Forester, going into a 2010 Forester. So... Um, Everything should work. We took the air box out of here. Then I can tuck the power steering pump into this area to keep it out of the way. Uh, took the battery off the side, disconnected the fuel lines here. It's a sweet little tool that just pushes in, but you can do that with a couple small, really small screwdrivers or dental picks or something. If you don't have that do need to be careful because in order to get the AC compressor up here and out of the way, you got to kind of twist the hose, which I'm sure isn't great for it, but I don't know a different way to do it. So now I'm to the point where down to basically just the block, pulled the little rubber cover off of here so I can access the bolts on the flywheel. I'm not sure what that... Yeah, let me show you. This guy right here, there's one, two, three, four. Four bolts that attach that to the transmission. And then once all of the bell housing bolts are off, the engine will slide forward. So I will have to hang it from the engine hoist um, to get that free. So my first job this morning is gonna be on my back underneath. I'm gonna try to unbolt the exhaust on each side. You can see the radiator is out. Nope, the radiator is in. The It's all disconnected though from the engine block. Um, so take the two exhaust manifolds loose, so the exhaust hangs down. There's two engine mounts on a cross member. Uh, that should free it up so that I can lift it up a little bit. Um, and then I'll start unbolting it from the bell housing. Let's start getting this done. Next step is to unbolt the bell, transmission bell housing from the block. There are a variety of 14 millimeter bolts around the edge of it most of them i'm going to leave that i'm not going to take that one out I'm just going to leave it in for now uh, most of them aren't too bad uh, i don't remember how many there are 
I'm gonna have to find them again. But I remember that there's one on the bottom driver's side that seems to be designed by somebody who I don't have a lot of respect for. It is almost impossible to get to. And that is the one that is your nemesis. It's one of those that you can't hardly see and you can't get a socket straight on it and it's underneath and no matter what you do, rust falls in your eyes and you end up hating life during it. And then you swear you're rounding the head of the bolt off and you just begin to imagine how this is only going to get worse and finally it comes off and it's the best feeling in the world and it makes you reaffirm and question why you ever decided to work on cars um there are a few on this side as well that are a little hard to see um so i'm gonna work on those um and not talk to you while i do it because i don't really mean that exciting to say Hi, <clears throat> I'm underneath the car. Uh, I'm gonna try to orient you as to where I am. Uh, I have a flashlight underneath here. There's the tranny pan. This is the driver. I can't see what you can see on the camera, so I apologize. Um, here is the driver's side oh. axle shaft. That is the nut that was my nemesis last time, and it's coming along pretty well this time. What I ended up doing was taking my 3 8 drive socket with a normal length 14 mil socket. It's not focusing. Um, with a, except that's a half inch drive socket with a 3 8 to half adapter, which gave me approximately the right length to reach that. Uh, I'm going to try to switch hands here. Uh, I was not able to get the socket on perfectly. It was like almost all the way on, but not quite. Can you see how it's not quite straight? It's on an angle. Um, and that's because I have the nut uh, about one turn loose, which gave me even less room for the socket. So I cracked it loose with this, with a breaker bar on it. So now my hope is I have a floppy socket. Uh, or I think, as far as I can tell, everything's disconnected, which means, of course, it's not. There are things I'm missing, but um, figure out what they are when it won't come loose. Uh, I'm going to be lifting it with my aluminum crane that I installed in the ceiling to the ceiling with an uh, electric hoist. Uh, but I want it to be... Right now, it's pulling on an angle this way, so... I need to roll the car forward um, so that it will lift the engine straight up. I want it to be a little bit of an angle because the engine needs to come forward off of, oh, I gotta unbolt the flywheel yet. I'll unbolt the flywheel, roll the car forward, and then we should be able to put you know, the weight on the hoist and uh, start lifting it up. Let's see if it'll wiggle off. All right, let's unbolt that flywheel. All right, so I have a little bit of a problem. Um, I needed to turn this, turn the crank or turn the engine to get that flywheel to move, but it is seized. 
completely jammed up, even with a breaker bar on, I can't get it to turn. Um, I'm not sure how to solve that. So I had a connecting rod, or the previous owner had a connecting rod blow up. Um, I assumed it would fall out of the way and still the engine would still turn. Um, I was able to reach in and pull out a chunk of connecting rod with uh, one of these little grabby doohickeys. Um, I do see another chunk of connecting rod that looks to be out of the way. It's loose and flopping around. So that's not wedged in there. It's definitely this number one cylinder connecting rod that shattered. Um, I'm not sure why the engine won't turn. Um, maybe I can get a pry bar. I don't know. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. I don't know if I can get a bar behind this journal. That crankshaft is solid. Oh, if I can't turn that, I don't know how to disconnect the flywheel from the transmission. I wonder if I could take the, seems like a lot of work, take the heads off, see if something's I don't know, then I could, the pillinder, cylinder should be able to move. Um, longer breaker bar on the crank bolt might be my next try. I don't know. I think I'm gonna sit down and scratch my head for a while. We're going to try to get in there and see if we can figure out what's going on a little bit better. So we're going to cut it open with an abrasive cutoff disc. Well, that's something you don't do every day is cut a chunk out of an engine block. Oh, there's some nice carnage in there. All right, I see the tail of, let me just try to show you. Focus on the right thing. Come on. So there we go. So there's the tail of the number one connecting rod. And then down in there, that chunk is loose. So I'm gonna try to get that out. That's the end of the number one connecting rod. There's the number one journal, which seems to be all clear. We've gotten the cap out. So I see a little gouging right there where I'm assuming the block or the cap gouged the block, but I don't know why the crank won't turn. I'm gonna work on getting that chunk out. It's loose in there, so that's not holding it up. Might be people out there who know exactly what's going on and have more experience than I do, but I don't know what's going on. Um, all right, let's get that little chunk out.
When I say a little chunk, it's not actually that small. Did you ever play the game Operation? It was just like that. Except nobody's life is on the line. It's coming. Add that to the carnage pile. Uh, but still, why won't the crank turn? Uh. Won't turn either way, front or back. You scratch my head more. All right, so a little time has passed, and uh, I decided to call in on the phone a friend feature and called a buddy of mine. And said, here's the situation. What the heck do I do? I got to get the engine to turn to get it out. I can't get it to turn. His suggestion was start dismantling it from the bottom side. So. I'm gonna pull you under with me and we're going to drain the oil. I think the oil's still in there. And uh, drop the oil pan and take some of those interior backets and baffles out, baffles out and see if there's a way for us to start taking the caps off the connecting rods and see if we can see if there's something that's wedging it or beat on it with a sledgehammer or something to try to figure out what we need to do to get this rotating assembly to become a rotating assembly again instead of a non-rotating assembly. So, let's start on the bottom. All right, let's, uh, this might be harder than I thought. Uh, oil plug is right here. Holy smokes, that's tight. All right, a little motivation. The exhaust is pretty in the way around this oil pan. I really don't want to take the whole exhaust apart. I'd hope to leave that in place. It'll be interesting to see. I am expecting tons of silvery grit and chunks. There also may be... I don't know, there might be... A little rainwater and coolant in there too. I'm glad it's slowing down because my drip pan's getting full. Let that drain for a little bit. Oh, let's get a nice view of me cleaning my hand. It's how mechanics keep those uh, silky soft skin baited a lot of engine oil. I'm sure that's really good for us. All right, I'm gonna take a look and see whether I can unbolt a couple exhaust mounts and lower it down i don't know if that's possible or not well in case you're wondering if you unbolt the 14 millimeter at the point just behind the transmission it will break off and then you have to take off the two 12 meters that hold the bracket on and then you'll realize that it's pretty close to hanging on the oxygen sensor wires 
in actuality it was hanging on this plastic thing so i unbolted the bracket right here which is hard for you to see um right here that goes on the bottom side of the passenger head which frees the oxygen sensors and then uh the whole thing drops to the ground so now i've got pretty easy access to the oil pan grab my ratchet and it's time to start taking these out but i need more light all right using my good old trusty air ratchet above that engine mount. Uh, crumbing. All right, let's get this pan off. See how stuck it is. Unfortunately, I'm not too worried about bending it. Let me lower the end. getting somewhere. Might be getting hung up by that frame mount. I am really curious to see how many chunks are in this thing. Wrapped by the oil pickup. All right, looks like I need to go back up with the. Uh, boy, this is a process. I need to go back up, I think, with the uh, hoist so I get enough room to get the oil pan up. All right, let's go on up. Now time to remove the pickup tubes. Ah. I'm afraid you may have a really good view of my armpit. I'm also trying to hurry 
which is never a good thing to do. There's the pickup tube. All right, so here is the, I don't know what you call it, a windage tray. Now we can see the bottom of the engine. I don't see anything nearly as dramatic and scary as I had thought. So I'm making some progress. I wedged this point and levered it off of there, which moved the flywheel. Now I have this much movement and it's stuck either way. But if I put it like that and go underneath, oh, bear with me. I now, sorry, there we go. I now can access one of them down here. So I'm going to take that one out and now I have two of the four out. And they gotta figure out what's preventing it from spinning or how to get the other two out. So, a little bit closer. But I can't take this out and hold the camera at the same time. Okay, so I am to the point where, uh, let me show you, if I put a breaker bar on this, I've got this much movement from there to there. And I cannot tell, but it seems like the crankshaft is uh, caught up on something that's bent or it's that other chunk of the connecting rod in there. And I cannot see where it is or what it's caught on. So uh, now I'm trying a different way to get at those bolts. So. Cut into it with an abrasive disc. Don't fall in there. All right. My luck. There's the nut. We'll see if I can get at that. If so, that gets me three of them out. I don't know how to get at the fourth one yet. Let me try that. All right, so I'm back underneath the car. I've been fighting this for about an hour now. I have three bolts out. The fourth bolt is right in there. That's the closest I can get to seeing it. You can just see, I might be able to zoom in there. You just see the head of the bolt right there. So I took my cutoff wheel, cut a bunch of the block out here, and I can just get my box end wrench on there like such and turn it. I don't know if I will have enough space to get it all the way out or not because I can only get one flat per turn on this, but I'm gonna do it as far as I can and we will see. I did have to take the engine mount out. I can spin it with my finger. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. It's coming. Come on, let's go. You can do it. I think it's spinning. I can't quite feel it very well. You can see 
There's the bolt. Now my phone is a greasy mess. Can't tell if it's actually, all right, I'm gonna keep working on this. You don't need to watch it. I have to say, I am proud to let you know, this is the fourth bolt out. I finally got it out of the bottom. In theory, it's disconnected, except for this 10 millimeter grounding strap I forgot about down there that I need to just cut. And then it should come out. The reason I'm cutting this is because I don't want to crawl back underneath there again and I bought new ones. So there, should be disconnected. Question is, will it come forward? Never comes easy. I remind you, I don't care about the block. So pounding on it does not make me nervous. I do need to get it to come loose from the tranny though. And I have to admit, I don't really know how to do that. I do want the front a little higher than the back. We got an engine. I think that wraps up uh, probably this episode. Uh, it took a little more work to get this engine out than I expected with the engine being seized. Um, I may tear the engine down a little bit further just to see some of the carnage, but then again, I don't know. It might be a waste of time too. So I'm uh, probably going to wrap up this video and then uh, the next one will be the installation and hopefully firing up of the new engine and the car being on the road the first time for a while. So thanks for being part of this, friends. I appreciate it. If you've got a question, post a comment below. If you would hit the thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Uh, but have a great day. Be kind to one another. Um, call your mom today and tell her that you love her. And uh, we'll see you next episode. Bye.